Welcome back, writers. Happy Monday. And if you're watching this on Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Well, I am here in my basement again, and I am here to talk to you about what we're going to be doing with your claims that you wrote last week. Writers, do you remember all that really good work you did last week? Digging through that story, those shoes, to come up with a claim, a big, bold statement, a stick in the ground about what you believe about the character of Jeremy. Many of you I saw in the Google Classroom, I saw that you wrote about how Jeremy is kind-hearted. Some of you said that he is open-hearted, which made me think of my friend Opal from Winn-Dixie. Some of you even wrote about how he's compassionate. And what you were doing last week is coming up with great evidence to back it up and to support why it is that you feel that way about that character. Now, I'm gonna ask you, moving into this week, if you last week got a little confused and you were writing about a different character from a story you're reading right now, that's okay. That's totally fine. But for this week, I'm gonna ask you to come back to our story, Those Shoes, and come up with a character trait that best describes Jeremy. Okay, and here's what we're gonna do with that, writers. So when a writer, like yourself, comes up with a very strong claim about a character, we can call that a thesis. Have you ever heard of that word before? Thesis. It looks like this. You might be asking yourself, why do we need to call it a thesis? Why can't we just call it a claim? You taught us last week that it's a claim. Well, it is a claim, but we're gonna be doing a little bit more with that. We're not just gonna leave that statement out there. You know what we're gonna do? We're going to write an essay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you got that right. We're writing an essay, but we're not writing an essay about why we think that we should be allowed to chew gum in school. No, we're not gonna write an essay about why we think that, hmm, Hmm. Ooh, there should be a soda machine in the lunchroom. Hmm. We're not gonna write an essay about something that we have an opinion on. Uh-uh. We've done that already this year. Oh, you know, we are gonna write an essay though about a character trait. And it's going to be rooted in a story. And the story is those shoes. And when writers write an essay that is about a story, do you know what we call that? Are you ready for this? I've got my little glasses on. I look very teachery, right? Sort of. We call that a literary essay. Say it with me. Literary essay. Don't you sound like a fourth grader, even fifth grader? Wow. Writers, a literary essay is something that you write. It's usually around five paragraphs. And it's all about something that you believe about a character and you're gonna back it up with evidence. And the evidence is going to be from the story. And you've already done all of that research. You put it in your Google Classroom last week. All the evidence and those quotes, those exact quotes that you lifted from the text, those are gonna help you write your literary essay. And today we're just gonna start with the very first paragraph. And like any first paragraph in anything we write, we call that the introduction. Now an introduction in a liter literary essay has two main things. And the first thing it has is a thesis. That thesis statement, say it with me. Thesis statement is something that you believe strongly. You believe that Jeremy is compassionate or that he's generous or that he's open-hearted. And let me show you how I do that with the character of Opal from Winn-Dixie. I start my introduction. This is my introduction. I know it's hard to see. In the story, Win dixie notice how I'm mentioning the book right away so that my reader knows which book I got this information from. Opal shows she is kind-hearted by how she treats others. That's my thesis statement. I'm saying in the book, Win dixie Opal shows she is kind-hearted. I am going to be teaching you or proving to you in my essay how I believe she is kind-hearted. And I'm gonna give you evidence, but just for today, we're gonna to do the introduction. So you're probably already thinking in your head about whatever big, bold claim you made last week. And you're going to be starting it and putting it into a paragraph today. And you'll see in your Google Classroom where to do that. You're going to come up with your first sentence. That is your statement, your thesis statement about Jeremy. I did Opal just for an example. You're going to do Jeremy from those shoes. The next thing you're gonna do though, 
we're missing something. We need one more sentence in our introduction. One more sentence to help the, re the reader want to stay with us. Do you remember what we call that? You're right. It's called a hook. A hook. I'm hooking you. Now, how do we do that? We want to hook somebody so that we can get them into our essay and make them want to stay with us. One way we can do that is by making a comparison. I could say, in the story Winn-Dixie, Opal shows she is kind-hearted by how she treats others. This reminds me of Little Willie, or do you remember Little Willie from Stone Fox? You can make a comparison. You can also ask a question. In the story Winn-Dixie, Opal shows she is kind-hearted by how she treats others. Do you want to know why I feel that way? Read on. Do you see what I'm doing? You can make a comparison to another character from another story, or you can ask your reader a question. What this does is it invites your reader to want to stay with you for the rest of your essay. Let's go ahead and make one up together, can we? In the story Winn-Dixie, I want you to be thinking right now, Opal shows she is kind-hearted by how she treats others. Should I make a comparison? Or ask a question? Hmm. I think I'm going to ask a question. That's one of my favorites. Hmm. Do you know a character like this? You could even say, would you like to know why I believe that? Read on. Okay, so now I'm inviting my reader in. Let's go ahead really quick. I want to show you before we move on because I'm gonna let you go. A student that I had a couple years ago, it was actually several years ago, his name was Raymer, and I'm going to show you his piece that he wrote about those shoes. Here we go. Okay, so this is a literary essay that my friend Raymer, he was a third grader, several years ago, wrote about the story, Those Shoes. Let's look at his introduction, which is right here. You can see him looking at it. Notice it's only a couple of lines. It's really actually only one sentence. And you might be thinking already, he's missing something. Let's read it together really well, really quick, because I think Raymer did a really good job. But I think together, we're going to start realizing some things that he might have wanted to change. But let's go ahead. You can even read it aloud with me if you want. In the story, Those Shoes, the main character, Jeremy, is really compassionate, making his claim, because he put his grandma's and Antonio's feelings before his own feelings. So see, he's made this big, bold statement about the character of Jeremy, and he's telling you why. He's saying he is really compassionate because he put his grandma's and Antonio's feelings before his own feelings. So now before I even go to the rest of his essay, I know that he's going to be proving to me how the character of Jeremy shows that he is compassionate. He's probably going to give me specific examples from the text to prove this about him. Now, one thing that we notice that Raymer is missing is a hook, isn't he? He's missing that question or that comparison. What's something he could write here? I wonder if maybe he could say, hmm, Jeremy is a lot like Opal from Winn-Dixie. In this way, or we could even say he, Jeremy is a lot like Opal from Winn-Dixie with his compassionate heart. Read on to learn why. Raymer's missing a hook, isn't he? So that's one way that he could change his introduction to make it even stronger. So now he has his claim his big, bold statement that he's making, that he's compassionate about how he put his grandma's and Antonio's feelings before his own, and then making a comparison to another character. Because as readers, we know, as third grade readers, we know who Opal is. So that's a comparison that really works for us because it helps us picture 
what kind of a character Jeremy is. He could also say, do you know anyone like Jeremy? Asking your reader, do you know anyone like Jeremy? Somebody who's compassionate and puts other people's feelings first. Now that we're asking our reader directly a question. And so when you do that, when a reader is asked a question, it makes them want to answer, which means it makes them want to read on to see what you have to say. So writers, that's about enough for today. All I want you to be thinking about for your work today is what's that statement? You've already done that. What's that claim you want to make? How are you going to back it up? And what's, what is your hook going to be? How are you going to get me or any other reader to want to read on in your essay? So literary essayists, this is a big day. You're starting your essay. It's just two sentences. You can make it another three if you want, but you are writing a thesis statement and a hook, and that's all you have to do. If you want to go into that document of, of Raymer's piece, you may. It is on your Google Classroom. You can use that as an example. If you want to refer back to this in the video about Winn-Dixie, you can refer to that as well. If you need to come, go into your email and ask me a question about it, you can do that also. But this really shouldn't take long. I know you're probably already thinking about what you want to write. And so I'm going to stop talking and let you know that we are starting a very, very fun activity. Before you know it, you're going to have a full essay. And you've already done the work to get ready for it. So today, just the introduction. Have fun. And remember just to keep writing. Writers, off you go.